Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. My name's Nicola and I blog over at thefrugalcottage.com all about budgeting, money saving, investing and lots of different things in between. Um, and if you're new here then welcome, hello, thanks for stopping by and if you're not new here then, then nice to see you again and, and actually see you. Now this is a first for me, I've never done a video where I've sat in front of the camera before and actually filmed my face. Um, so this is a new one but 2020 for me is all about kind of stepping out of my comfort zone and, and this is one of these. So hello, happy new year. And talking of 2020, today's video is all about our no spend year. So this year for 2020, we're aiming for a no spend year. Now, um, I've had lots of questions about this, lots of people on Instagram messaging me to talk about this. Um, so I thought I'd do a video to explain what that means, uh, what that means for us and, uh, and kind of our rules. Now, um, and this might be really different to different people and I've had a couple of comments saying but you can't possibly do a no spend year. It is actually impossible to do and, and yes, um, if you look at it at face value, no I can't do a no spend year. There are fixed expenses that everybody has um, to, you know, in order to live. So things like mortgage payment, our council tax, water rates, gas and electricity. Um, and the things that are kind of fixed expenses in our budget are there and will stay there. Now the only thing you can do with those is to check that you're on the best rate, so your mortgage rate, is that the best one you could be on? Or your gas and electricity, the best tariff you can have? Those kind of things, do check for that and do check those regularly. But yes, in terms of a no spend year, I'm not actually doing, uh, so I'm not actually not spending at all, because um, that's impossible and yes I agree. And then the question goes, can you call it a no spend year? But the point behind it is, to look at your spending habits, uh, where your money goes, where it goes, where maybe it isn't probably the best for that and, and kind of really stripping back um, to the basics of a budget and that's the idea behind our no spend year this year. Um, one of the main things for us that we're focusing on and, and one of the things I think we'll find most difficult is to have no takeaways, no eating out and no takeaway coffee and the takeaway coffee is all down to me, it's, it's, that's my thing, we've got a drive through Costa near us that I go through quite often um, and when I looked at our budget because I've looked at the 2019 spends that we did, kind of that proportion, the takeaway, the eating out um, and the coffee, um, it's quite a big chunk of our budget that goes on that um, and um, it can have a big impact on other areas as well. So the, the main one for us there is, is the no takeaways thing and that's purely down to uh, willpower when you're tired. You know when you're tired you're getting from work, you can't be bothered, it's just easier to uh, kind of even on, you know, on your phone on an app just order a takeaway, that kind of thing. Um, that's the kind of thing we're going to stop. Now the, the another thing for us is um, no clothes shopping. Now if you've watch my videos before, if you watch my cash envelope stuff and videos because we're, um, we're a cash budget for our variable expenses and clothes is one of those, you will know, you'll have heard me say before that I'm not a fan of clothes shopping, I'm not at all, um, but looking at the amount of clothes that both me and my husband own, um, we don't need to buy any more clothes um, and if I say that to myself enough times I, I do agree with that, we don't need to buy any more clothes. Um, we don't need to buy any clothes for a whole year. I think we've got more than enough. In fact, we've probably got too many clothes. Um, another one is kind of making do with things, using them up. So this is stuff like, so I have quite um, a minimal makeup kind of set, I suppose you'd call it. Um, but it's things like that, using it up before you buy any more. Shower gel, body, body cream, moisturiser, all those things that kind of sit. And you, especially being Christmas, if you've got any gift sets, they kind of sit there, don't they? And it's using things up. Uh, before buying anymore and that, that can also relate to and will do for us um, food in the cupboards. Now I've got a really popular blog post about start, how to start a stockpile and organising it um, and it works really well, it's really good to kind of keep your food budget down but at the same time that can sometimes mean that there are there is quite a lot of food kind of just sat in cupboards and could be used and, and so for me in the make do and use up before you buy any more, that also extends to using some of the things in the food cupboards that I could do with using, you know, the odd things that you buy um, that kind of then just sit there. That that also extends to that for this for this year. Um, and now, and I had a comment from somebody the other day about how this works when you've got children. Now we have two young children and the sticking point for this no spend year for us is the fact that it doesn't count for them. 
well it, it does kind of so things like school related uh, spends within reason don't count um, activities they might do so our oldest one does gymnastics he will still do that um, anything to do with their general well-being for want of a better word doesn't count but it but it does count within reason so I've noticed recently when we go shopping um, they're, they're both now because they're four and two they're both like oh can we get this oh I like this oh mummy I like this can we get this and and they're, they're almost expecting to get something when we go out now and um, I'm trying to get them to realize that you know they've they've got more than enough stuff in our house they've, we've just had Christmas they've got loads more toys books jigsaws audiobooks all this kind of thing they don't need to have anything else when we go out and that's quite a tough lesson to learn for someone quite young but I'm trying to get them in the idea of we don't always have to buy new things we don't always have to buy something when we pop out other than what we've, we've gone for um, and we'll see how that goes um, I think they might notice a bit of a change but at the same time they might not and they might just accept that as okay because we don't we don't buy them that much in terms of kind of toys and things when we go out we try not to um, and even things like going out for the day so taking a packed lunch um, having a picnic in the park taking a flask with hot chocolate in they're the kind of things that they love anyway so for them that's not anything different that's not kind of a negative response to that that's something that they'd love anyway they'd like having a picnic in the park after being on the swings and the slide and whatever that's not a, that's not a hardship to them at all so in terms of that um, I think in some ways it just takes a bit more planning on my part to be more organised but for them I don't think they're missing out on anything there. This might be a very different challenge when you have two teenagers um, but at the moment we have two young two young children who, who won't really miss out and again things like new clothes and new shoes for them that won't count either because obviously they're going to grow, they're going to need new clothes, they're definitely going to need new shoes because they seem to go through those at a really fast rate anyway. Um, so in terms of the no spend year with two children it is different to if you're having a no spend year with two adults okay and I appreciate that and, and again it does come with some conditions like like I said like especially clothes and shoes that they'll need those and that's not that's not fair to, for me to say oh no well you can't because that's part of being an adult and that's part of being a responsible parent is you get things for your children when they need them but there is a there is a fine line there and if 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 you could see the amount of toys and stuff that we have in our house now, it is ridiculous and they really don't need any more. In fact, we need to sort through some and take some to the charity shop because they've got far too many. Um, so in terms of the no spend year for them, it is, it is slightly different, I suppose. Um, but even things like talking about the going out for the day and stuff, there's lots of things that we can do for free around here. Even going, like I say, going to park, getting the bikes out, having a picnic. Finding things that are fun to do as a family, because you know family time is important, spending time together is important and I've talked about that a lot on my blog. But there are things you can do during a no spend year which, which don't involve any kind of spending at all. And actually some of those things are the, the, the things you remember when you go up, like when you grow up and get old, they're the things you remember. You don't remember the toys you were bought but you remember the times you had and that's kind of, that's going to have to be in the, fore, like the forefront of everything we do this year. Um, and in terms of just general spending just needs to be just kind of just scaled back a bit and the reason for why we're doing this is I've got some quite big aims for our year this year in terms of money in terms of investments and um, which then all feeds into our ultimate dream um, now if you if you're new to my channel I'll link the ultimate dream blog post below you can have a read about that if you want to but that essentially is why we're doing all this that's why we ever do any of this um, is to leak like link into that and lead up to that moment hopefully if we do it right um and that, that's pretty much it for our no spend year so just um oh another one is books so i've got about i've got a pile of books at the moment there's about 30 books in it that i have to read and my husband also really likes reading that links into the making do and using up um i'm not allowed to or i'm not allowing myself to buy any more books um, to be delivered until I've read all of these books that I have in my house and um, that should take me quite a while so things again like that um, is just are just not necessary and but things that are, are really easy to order online that's another thing I've deleted apps off my phone I've unsubscribed to emails that send you links to sale and whatever um, if you're the kind of person that gets swayed by things and I'm totally one of these 
um, unsubscribe to the emails, delete the apps, even if it's temporarily, delete you know, Amazon, eBay, whatever the apps that you use are, um, delete those uh, even in the short term because that will help the no spend year no end um, and I've done that and like I say I've got lots of lots of lovely books to read um, and then once they're all out then use the library instead we've got a fantastic library in town um, and I don't know why I don't use it more often anyway so that's another uh, thing to do with our no spend year um, and, and essentially I'm, I'm actually quite excited this anxious nervous apprehensive about it maybe um, but excited to see the challenges the biggest one I think especially at the moment will be the takeaways and the eating out and I'm gonna miss my coffees I need to find a way around that somehow um, I wonder if there's any like survey sites that have coffee vouchers as one of their rewards I'll have to look if you know let me know and also if you are intended to take part in this then please let me know leave some comments below uh, tag me on social media, follow along on Instagram, I'll be doing lots of different things on Instagram um, and I'll be doing reflective kind of videos on this, probably monthly, um, to do with how we're finding it and what the impact of that is in terms of on our finances and, our, and you know, we'll see how it goes. 12 months is a long time to stick to something for. Um, they say it takes 21 days to form a habit and yet I've picked to do a whole year's worth so we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes with two children um, and yeah and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like this video because I've got lots of content planned for 2020 um, including some savings challenges that I hope you'll join me on and I will see you again very soon.